were amazing as well. So welcome at the Metal Galaxy YouTube channel as it's the first time of seeing you perform and talking to you. So let's first introduce you. Who are you and who is Warbringer? Uh, my name is John Keeble. I started this band Warbringer right out of high school about 15-16 years ago. Nice. We have six albums so we're part of, originally we we're part of what's called the Thrash Revival movement which was to play old-school style thrash metal in the 2000s and beyond uh, because it had disappeared from the metal landscape for a while. Now that sort of, I feel like thrash is just an ordinary part of the metal landscape now, so I get mission success. Uh, and we, I think, have evolved a lot as a band, and I think we've made uh, some of the strongest thrash albums you can hear of recent years in our last couple. So which one do you recommend to listen to? Uh, personally, my favorite is probably Woe to the Vanquished, uh, but Weapons of Tomorrow, very close. I'm most proud of these two, although I don't think we've made a shitty record. <laughs> and so why are you specifically proud of uh, Many reasons. Uh, I think the, I think when the band starts, we're very young, and it's very, uh, it, it begins as something more like retro and more like our influences. And I think as the band continues, it develops more in its own direction. It becomes uh, not only thrash metal, but also, uh, a lot of the different extreme metal influences, um, some Black Death stuff in there, Black Speeds, uh, some Bathory stuff, and uh, in different in certain songs. And I just think uh, I've grown a lot as a singer, as a lyricist. Uh, playing and musicianship is the band, and the band has improved. We've played somewhere in the order of one thousand five hundred shows, and uh, so if we weren't better now than when we started, we should retire. You know. Uh, so I, I really think that we've worked very hard. I think we've kept true to our initial mission to be kind of the most savage and aggressive live band you can see, basically. And uh, so I, and I think we more or less are. We, I write, could be conceit for you to do this. Uh, but I'm very proud of that. And also, the band at one point sort of exploded after our fourth record, Empire's Collapse, in 2013. And so I'm very proud of how we were able to build it. And uh, Back even stronger. Not uh, many people in the fan base agree with this view, and uh, it makes me proud that I was able to continue this long without uh, just crew going on crew controls, to still be inspired to make new records and still find ways to push the direction of the band awesome. without, without leaving the core of uh, being vicious and thrashing, basically. Awesome. So for us, we need to wait a few years and see if you improve. So we look uh, forward to that. Well, the, uh, probably not a few years. I think we're working on one now, so maybe a year or something. And any new music coming up? Well, yes, exactly what I was saying. Uh, we're working mm -hmm. on one currently. We have a set of uh, maybe six or seven demos uh, that require some finishing, but we have maybe half the work on an album and done right anything now. you can spoil on us, the name, the title? Uh, the title usually comes last for us for some reason. In pretty much every record, the title is like the last thing we figure out. Mm -hmm. Um, but what I can say is, as a lyricist, I'm working on themes of, I did a lot of, uh, of the last two records had a lot of, not like concept records, but maybe one third to half the songs have to do with, uh, sort of the legacy of modern historical warfare and how it affects the world today and how I feel about it. And it basically it's a great picture and that fills me with rage to know it. Um, but. I need to move somewhere else, so I think I want to write a lot about um, sort of the uh, technological dystopia that we find ourselves in, the lack of hope for the future. Like, nobody thinks human civilization is going in a good direction, and it makes people fundamentally change how they see the world. Uh, it makes really people cool. very depressive, it makes people not have children and stuff, and like, uh, it, you know, just sort of uh, a death of uh, of hope and everything, and I've been inspired. I, I read a bunch of like, yeah. science, dark science, and 
cyberpunk stuff that nice. deals with this, and so, so I want to go sort of this direction. Or maybe a new genre of sci-fi device. Yeah, nice. maybe, yeah. <laughs> Uh, check out, I just read Neuromancer by William Gibson. Mm -hmm. Holy shit, it makes you feel like your soul is getting sucked out into a colorless digital <laughs> void. It's a great, I, I want to get that kind of feeling on record. And uh, I think I have a different angle to do it in. Because I think it's very easy to talk yeah. about modern dystopic themes to be like, you damn kids are on your phones! And that's kind of lame and stupid. And I, I think I want to talk more about how, like, mm -hmm. to personalize Instead of mm -hmm. putting it as you, put it as, like, I. Like, I feel uh, this just horrific, depressive way. Because I, I have, and especially mm -hmm. uh, during COVID and stuff, we were stuck in there for a while. I got in a very depressive state. I was living in the city in the middle of Los Angeles, which feels more and more like a dystopia every day. Yeah. You can't go three seconds without seeing advertisements in your face and stuff. I moved out to the country two months ago, and I feel better about it, uh, but I needed to get out of that, and uh, it filled me with a lot of anger and sadness, and I and think I want to channel that. Be, yeah, that's yeah, I going channel to be that. unleashed, so yeah. I'm looking forward, as for me, dress metal is a way to, there is some energy at least, and you can just suck it in, it's a very nice uh, music genre, and the old sci-fi genre, it puts you in a different spot than our other ones, so. Yeah, it's, it's something we need for a bit, and I think it's kind of in line with the genres yeah. and stuff. Uh, but if you look at the... One of the things that drew me to thrash metal in the first place is if you look at the stuff that the original generation of thrash metal was angry about, uh, you know, there's, like, social conformity, there's, like, corporate power, there's police power, and, and there's, like, you know, environmental collapse, stuff, things like, I don't know, nuclear assault or when the sun grows red from creator, this kind of stuff. And I, you know, I'm a teenager, I get into metal, and I'm listening to all this, I'm like, every single thing they're angry about, we have solved none of it. What's retro about this? These are the same problems we have today. And that's something about that connected with me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I'm angry about all of those things. You know, yeah, I'm listening as a teenager, self addressed and so many topics are coming back, so it's nice to something else. And speaking about Gravit's anger, you are ravaging a hero with evil invaders, with Mason. And with schizophrenia, and yeah, that was uh, in April, uh, April mostly, but five, six weeks, some long tour. So, how was the tour? Any uh, concerts uh, destroyed? Any buildings? Many buildings destroyed. It was very good. Um, in particular, I think the standouts to me were Paris and London on that tour. And yeah. how do you think all the bands aligned or just built up to moment? I think it was very good. Uh, I do think it's better if you have a little bit of a spread of mm -hmm. genre. So everything was, uh, schizophrenia is like an old school death metal band, Evil Invaders is like beat thrash you might describe it as, nice. and Mason's more like a traditional thrash sound, and I think we're like thrash slash extreme metal. So in all that, there's kind of a spectrum, that, but it's uh, coherent, it's not like, and now yeah. something totally different, but at the same time, it's not like something completely the same. And yeah. what was the best moment and the best pitch in UFC? Best bit? Uh, that's hard to say. There were very many. Uh, Leon was really crazy. That was a sweaty show, and there were people hanging from the ceiling on a couple of them. So that was uh, great. And actually, Glasgow, Scotland was a really small one, but they were mental. They had, something's not right with these guys. <laughs> <laughs> they were just messing, or? Well, the thing was, is the, the ceiling was low, and it went like this up. So people would crowd surf, and they'd be carried to the back of the room, and they would be touching the ceiling. Like, I, I crowd surfed and went to the back to the bar, and, and like my belly is scraping the ceiling, and people are pushing me, and so I'm like crawling on it, and everything. Crazy. Oh, so and Prague was like that, too. Prague, the Czechs are utterly mental. So you're just <laughs> giving your DNA your sweat. Yeah, it's spread all over the place now. I've just contaminated pretty much every stage I've ever been on. Good, there is, uh... Well, there's nothing to be contaminated, yeah. probably, so... So yeah, the place is have now a proper cleaning. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, no, I'm used to everything being filthy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if anything was cleaned at all, it's a, a nice bonus. <laughs> nice. So we are on the crazy tour. Oh, well, if you... Uh, let's do something random. If you could switch bodies with anyone, who would you pick? That is interesting. Switch bodies or like... Uh, bodies but not minds? Like I would have yeah. my mind in someone else's body? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That's a, you know what? No, I wouldn't. 
I, I like how I am just fine. I don't know, maybe I'd be like Arnold and Conan the Barbarian because it'd look cool with the sword. You know, yeah, that might be it. I, I really like that movie though, so maybe that's just where my head goes. Yeah, but I don't know. I generally like eh, never really wanted to do that much. I guess you're um, just happy with Warbringer and your body. Yeah. Yeah, and every, everyone should be, honestly, because there's no... Mm -hmm. it, it, you'll, you'll be happier that way, you know, it's the only thing there is, so get used to it, <laughs> yeah. So, last question. John and uh, Roberto bring out your band in video. Uh, I wonder what the main core uh, elements are when you... Uh, what you have in each video. I saw the last one unraveling, and there was a lot of crowd moments yeah. and so So, I wonder how do you bring out the band in video? Well, in the case of Unraveling, it was straight up, we hired some people to film a concert in Pomona, in which is near Los Angeles, um, and it was a crazy show, and that was it. We didn't do anything for that video besides play a concert, and everything you see was actual footage from the concert. Nice. So, actually, that's one of my favorite videos we have, but they crushed beneath the track the previous video we did, and this one was like the band in a like, white hanger. Uh, and then it interspersed with images of like interesting stuff. So the, the uh, director and I talked, and he was like, "We I tried to get the concept of the song to him, which was sort of how uh, technology is sort of making people obsolete in a sense, and, and how progress can like destroy people's lives, and, but it's particularly the disadvantaged in society. So there's shots in there you'll see about like of like playing against like, a robot arm, creeping stuff like that. And, uh, someone like uh, hitting uh, like a robot. There's like a robotic dog, one of those bosses, dynamic ones, and contrast with like a homeless man and his real dog who are living in deprivation. Stuff like that. So I, I generally what I, I look at every song has kind of its own concept and I try to express that in the video most of the time. Uh, unraveling being kind of a live thing is sort of the exception. Yeah, the videos I, are very good, it's like you're there, it's very immersive. I, I really sure. like that. Actually, I kind of like the live ones mm -hmm. the most, because I think that's where the band really shines. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, also good to promote you. It yeah. was like, I'm looking forward to your show, I won't be there when looking on Unraveling. Yeah. Nice, and uh, with this question we are at, at the end of the interview, so thank you so much for taking oh, the time. Uh, telling more about Warbringer, your upcoming uh, music and yeah thank you so much for the viewers who are watching subscribe and like as we have more content but most importantly support warbringer as they are a great press metal band and they uh, also deliver great crowd moments so follow them and be there when they release new music so see you bye come and get wrecked <laughs>